Heatran and Primarina are Pokemon that we don't see too often in Regulation F, but do have a lot of potential in the format. And we're going to be trying out a team that ended up getting top 8 in an online tournament and seeing how well it can perform. This Heatran and Primarina team got top 8 in an online tournament with over 150 players. It's really interesting to see that Primarina has picked up usage, especially in the global challenges where it's more favored because Water and Fairy is such a strong offensive and defensive type combination where it's great offensively, it's great at taking attacks, and Primarina does have pretty decent bulk with pretty high special defense, so it's able to handle, for instance, the darker Shifu and Fluttermane combinations and fire back some pretty offensive damage with the Moonblast and Hyper Voice, threatening that darker Shifu able to take water shifu surging strikes decently well and fire back with a moonblast and haze especially is a great move on primarina because it's able to get rid of those stat boosts from dundozo which is a very nice option indeed and then we have the heatran which has fallen off a lot since it came back in regulation d but with the introduction of all the new fire types it does have a little bit of struggles but still does what it does a really bulky fire type a special fire type in fact which is very hard to come by with an option to just stick around on the field it has four times resistance to fairy with flutter means dropping shadow balls also pretty nice to drop in water shifu but the wellspring ogre pond has picked up in usage so kind of balances out there but with the terra grass still a pretty strong option it's a pokemon that has a lot of potential and it's no surprise to see it do well in this tournament with Substitute making it a little bit annoying to get rid of, especially against common cores with Substitute being able to prevent the double fake out rotations from like Incineroar or Reelaboom. It's really good into like the Incineroar plus like the Reelaboom or Moongus comps that we see. So definitely a lot of potential there. Next up following with the pair is the Xi'an Pao and Dragonite mode. The Xi'an Pao able to dish out a lot of damage. The interesting one is this one's opting for Ice Shard over the Sacred Sword. And I guess you don't really need Sacred Sword on this team, but just having that extra priority that can help out a little bit, maybe hitting the Raging Bolt for more damage can be pretty nice. And the Clear Amulet Dragonite, which is an interesting tech with Terra Steel, not Terra Normal. So this one's running multi-scale and you don't have to worry about Intimidates because you have Clear Amulet, but it also helps out against the Flutter Mains as well because they try to Icy Wind and then that doesn't affect the Dragonite. It's also nice into Electro Web Raging Bolts too. You set up the Dragon Ants, and then you put on a lot of pressure with either Iron Head, the Terra Steel Boost, the Stomping Tantrum that can hit Raging Bolts and other Fire Types, and Extreme Speed for the priority, which can follow up with Shame Pow nicely. Extreme Speed and Ice Shard or Extreme Speed and the Sucker Punch can catch a lot off guard, especially after a plus one boost, basically giving me a Choice Band damage output. Then finally, the remaining two, really good just general coverage. Wellspring Ogre Pond gives Heatran a nice grass typing, but also water grass core, where if you don't bring the Primarina, like having that Ogre Pond Heatran with Xi'an Pao Dragonite's a nice pair. That follow me support, really nice. The Wood Hammer for extra damage output, being able to actually KO, unlike Horn Leech, on a lot of Pokemon, like Urshifu, for instance, and uh, opposing Wellspring Ogre Pond if they Terra. And the Raging Bolt, this one just being a support set with the Electro Web Snarl. With the Assault Vest, just able to take a lot of attacks. Draco Meteor to help out against opposing Raging Bolts for more damage output. Especially it's good into like the Torn and the Water Shifu that still run around. So having that Thunderclap option is still really nice to help support the Heat Trend. If you would like to check out the details of the team and the creator, they'll be linked in the description down below. Incineroar, Amoongus, Roaring Moon... Alola Ninetales or Shifu Volcarona. This is actually a really cool team. Incineroar Moongus or Shifu, and then we have the Volcarona, which we've seen a bit popping off recently, doing well at the European regionals, and then we have the Roy Moon as well as the Alola Ninetales. Huh. I actually really like uh, some of the looks of this team, but let's see what we can do against it. We do have. Alola well, Ninetales is actually a really scary mon. It's not easy for my team to exactly break through. But we, uh, Heatran's really strong in this matchup. Just because if it's like the Terra Fairy, Terra Blast, Volcarona, uh, Heatran is able to wall that set pretty easily. I would have to protect the Heatran's item, which is the leftovers in this case. And I also got to make sure that I am cautious here because her Shifu is still a pretty big threat. I think that this game, I don't really need Xi'an Pao too much. I do like the Primarina actually as an opener because they don't exactly have the best immediate damage output against it. I like the Primarina plus Heatran, I think is pretty strong in most cases. 
Well Spring Ogre Pond and Raging Bolt in the back. Dragonite and Xian Pao aren't too bad. Dragonite is nice against some of this team. I don't think they're going to bring Volcarona. Mainly because I have the Dragonite, which is a really big pain to their team, especially with the especially against the firewater grass core in incineroar moongus or shifu and volcarona so i think it's gonna be like a nine tails roaring moon game which i think primarina is really good against oh wow they actually brought the volcarona which i am surprised by but heatran is a really good matchup here so i'll definitely take it so snow is gonna activate i don't know if there's gonna be a roar veil but i do have haze so i'm not like too concerned about it I think I'm just going to fire off a Hyper Voice and just go for a Substitute immediately because the Substitute does put me in a pretty decent spot, although I could just go for a Heat Wave too. Do I think Hyper Voice plus Heat Wave would knock out Ninetales? Probably not, actually. You know what? I'm just going to go for the Heat Wave because Aurora Veil is going to come out and probably Quiver Dance. I do have Haze on the Primarina, which will get rid of the stat boost from the Volcarona. So, like, if they try to go for two Quiver Dances to try and break through this uh, Heatran or, like, break through this Slot Partner in time, I'm just going to Haze away to boost, so it's not that big of a concern. Heat Wave going to come out. Yeah, as I can see, not doing too much damage to the Ninetales. Hyper Voice, able to get some pretty decent damage across the board. Going to be that Leftovers on the Volcarona instead of the Citrus Berry that we commonly see. Going to make it a little bit tougher, but yeah, we just go for a Haze this turn, and we're going to go for a Heat Wave. Very, very simple process. And yeah, they shouldn't be able to knock out the Primarina unless they're like Paragrass. But Struggle Bug going to come out. Ooh. Struggle Bug Quiver Dance. Not a set we would commonly see, but all right. Definitely a unique one there. Blizzard. Okay. As you can see, not doing too much damage, but they want to cover Switch. Just get some spread damage. Heat Wave going to come out. Does pick up the knockout nine tails. Not too much damage on Volcarona, but you know what's fun about Struggle Bug and Quiver Dances? We have a haze on the Pre Marina, which is going to get rid of all those stat changes that just occurred. So, absolutely beautiful. So, that is the Quiver Dance gone, and our special attack has been reset on both Pokemon. Excellent position. So, let's see who they're bringing out next. Probably our Shifu to pressure the Heatran, unless they want to bring Roaring Moon, but then I just Moonblast it. So they would probably force a Terra. Amoongus coming in is not what I expected. Okay. I'm just going to click Hyper Voice. There's nothing wrong with me clicking Hyper Voice. And I will go for a Substitute to prevent Spore. Although I think you would Spore to Primarina most likely. I would say yeah. That would probably be likely the case, right? So I'm going to Sub. Because they can't do any damage. Sure, you can struggle bug all you want, but it's not really helping the case here. Because once I haze away the changes, it's going to be all right. I guess they want just a Moongus to take less damage, which is fine. I'm able to get a substitute up with my Heatran and a Hyper Voice into the Volcarona. Just building up more damage. So that Volcarona is getting extremely low on health and doesn't have any Quiver Dance boost. We are going to see the Spore come out into the Primarina, which is acceptable. Maybe I should have saved this up for the next turn. A Spore and a Primarina was more likely here, but... I don't know. The build up here is really nice. Also, I'm trying to figure out how to break into the Primarina right now, because their damage output against Primarina is very, very mediocre. I am going to Haze and just go for a Heat Wave. There really isn't much they can do here. Oh, I guess they have Pollen Puff, so even though that's the case... I mean, the thing is, sure, you can Pollen Puff. You're stalling out your own Aurora Veil turns. I'm going to get a Haze off eventually because you're just not doing any damage to me. Uh, So, like, even then, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like, the Heat Wave is building up damage into the Moongus, which is nice. We get a Burn, too, which is going to allow for even more chip damage across the road. Uh, We're going to take our first turn of sleep. I'm just not sure how you're breaking through... Oh, Sludge Bomb. That is scary. Okay. Does that mean you don't have Pollen Puff, though? Because if you don't have Pollen Puff, that also still thing. I kind of wish I had the Heat Wave then, if that's the case, but... Alright. I mean, I'm just going to attempt to go for... I protect this turn with Primarina, or do I Heat Wave? I think I attempt... No, I definitely attempt to protect with Primarina this turn. Yeah. I'm also not too scared of Volcarona because I did bring the Wellspring Ogre Pond in the back with a, ter a Terra option, which I think is pretty good. 
So I'm just going to protect my Primarina and I'm going to go for a Heat Wave. Ah, I could have hazed. Ah, this is not... Okay, that's not going to be pleasant. Who's coming in? Incinero... Wait, did Imring or Shifu? Okay. I... This is going to be weird. I stayed asleep though, which is actually kind of unfortunate because this is Heat Wave now. No, Flamethrower. Okay, so they have Flamethrower. Doesn't do too much. Heat Wave. I met... No, I did connect. That was just luck. Oh, I crit the Volcarona. That's also a thing, too. They were playing so passive that I was probably eventually going to get a crit on the Volcarona at some point in the game. But also, like, I'm pretty sure that Wellspring Ogre Pond was able to win with Terra. They were only plus one. They weren't doing too much damage. Uh, they still couldn't break their Heatran. I don't know how to break their Heatran. I eventually get some kind of crits there in that game. Also, I think Heatran just beats the Volcarona 1v1 realistically. So... Yeah, I just don't know how they were really breaking through that efficiently. I guess I just protect and heat wave, but yeah. Uh, it's just looking really rough for them. Especially with, again, Wellspring Ogre Pond was still really strong. I'm surprised they didn't actually forfeit because I do think the game is over <laughs> for them. Heat wave next. So eventually, Aurora Veil is also going to go down. They go for the knockoff and heat train. I guess they're just going to try to break the sub. Which it does break the sub, so are they sporing? No, they sludge bomb the Primarina and get the Primarina, which is fine. Again, I had Wellspring in the back. I guess they still have Terra as an option. But I don't know if Terra was going to be enough. Yeah, I just don't really see it. Go out into the Ogre Pond. Stall out, I guess, the terrain turns. Did they not have Pollen Puff? I'm just curious. Or do they not have Protect? It's one to two. Two turns of Aurora Veil. Just going to Spiky Shield and Protect, I think. It's very safe. Yeah, they realize that the game is over in Forfeit. So, they get lucky with the crit. The crit sped up the process a lot, I think. It gave them pretty much an unwinnable situation. But it was just, I don't know how to break into Heatran and Wellspring Ogre Pond. Because Wellspring Ogre Pond, if it's Struggle Bug, then I just don't think they're doing enough damage to the... I just don't think they had enough damage output against the Wellspring Ogre Pond next to the Heatran, which was really rough for them, especially with the Pokemon they brought. Fluttermain, Chiyu, Blood Moon, Ursaluna, Dragonite, the... Iron Leaves and the Raging Bolt. Okay, I am getting some deja vu. I'm pretty sure I played against this team. <laughs> I don't remember anything about it, though, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. No, it does look really familiar. I don't know if it's electric train gimmicks or not. It does look like it. But again, I think only Raging Bolt and Iron Leaves get access to electric terrain. Hmm... That'd be a weird one. He turns really good against the Flare Main Chiyu. But it's a little bit strange into the other Mons. Dragonite can put on a lot of pressure. Hmm. I don't think I mind Chien Pao Lee. Chien Pao seems pretty solid. Just because it's really a lot of pressure against their team. I think the Dragonite can put in work. And then Romania is like Heatran Primarina, probably. Although it's tough. I do want to bring Heatran. I just don't know if I'm bringing Primarina or not. Because it can put in work. It's just really weird. I'm, I think I'll bring it. Probably is Ogre Pond's not exactly amazing this matchup. Heatran's really good to Flutter Main Chiyu, which is probably like what's kind of scary about this matchup against the. Right? It's scary against the Dragonite Chien Pao. Let's find out because they have a lot of damage up. But we're gonna see Fluttermane and Blood Moon or Saluna lead. Okay. So what are you going for with the Flutter? Booster energy, speed. Okay, speed booster it is. So I have a few options. I could go straight for a Iron Head, or do I wanna take I kind of want to just protect the Xi'an Pao. Xi'an Pao is in a pretty safe position. I think I just Iron Head the Flutter Main. 
Because if they icy wind, it doesn't matter. I have clear amulet on the Dragonite. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of Iron Heading the Flutter Main. Getting rid of that speed booster is nice. Or she and Pow. She and Pow gonna protect. Looks like the Flutter Main didn't. But let's see. Icy wind, perfect. I multi scale, so I'll be able to live to hit. I don't take the speed drop and then Iron Head vote KO to Flutter. So that's a pretty good response. Okay. I don't know if Blood Moon would have outsped my Shein Pal though after Icy Wind and Icicle Crash would have probably picked up the knockout into the Blood Moon. I have no idea if that's the case, but we'll see. He went straight for the Blood Moon actually into Dragonite. Okay. I mean, I would have taken a speed drop though with Shein Pal and uh, lost my Focus Ash, which would not have been great. So I still think this is a pretty good trade off. I'm going to go Pre Marina, I think, next. Because I don't know if they're going to go Raging Bolt, but I like the idea of Pre Marina. It's in a good offensive position. Like, to you, yeah, that's a pretty good position. So let's go out into our Pre Marina. We can click Hyper Voice pretty safely, get a lot of damage with that Beads of Ruin. Go Heatran. I, I want to say to Shein Pao because I think Shein Pao is still very valuable as the last one remaining. So let's just go for Hyper voice of our own get a bunch of damage off bring in our heatran unless they earth power into the Shein pal slot but if you earth power in the Shein pal slot that means you are no shot knocking out the premarina and premarina gets a huge amount of damage across the board this turn so i think that's a a trade i'm willing to accept i'm pretty sure especially since i already took care of one of the things that i was like oh heatran does really good against which was the flutter main now it's the chi -Yu. if i get a bunch of damage in the chi -Yu to put in range of the Shein pal i'm in a good spot so let's see what they click. Snarl could be a move now. Snarl can be a move, but I still do a massive amount of damage to them, which is okay. And I also resist Hyper Voice if they click Hyper Voice this turn. They protect Blood Moon Ursaluna to reset uh, the Blood Moon while not taking too much damage, which is acceptable. They go for Heat Wave. Nice. So I am able to get the Flash Fire boost. Okay. That's pretty good. As I do get a Hyper Voice off, I'll get some pretty strong damage into Chiyu. Yeah, that's really good damage. Okay. Do I think it's max speed Blood Moon? Do I speed time? No, I should be faster than max speed Blood Moon with Heatran. Mm, I have Heat Wave with Flash Fire. I don't think they're clicking Hyper Voice. Heat Wave Hyper Voice is an option I do have. So I'm trying to consider whether I click Substitute or not. I'm going to click Sub actually and I'm going to Protect. Because I want to scout for what they're clicking this turn. I don't know if Chi is swapping out. That's my only concern. Like I could have pinned the Chi, but the Chi is not exactly in a safe spot. But the thing is the Chi is making the Blood Moon position even scarier for the Blood Moon. <laughs> so uh, we're going to see the swap here into the Dragonite. Okay, that's a threat. Protect the Primarina. They're... Who are they attacking? I can't tell. I guess substitute up with the Heatran. Let's see. Did they go for Earth Power or did they go for Blood Moon? Go for Earth Power. Okay. Are you Tailwind with the Dragonite? I feel like Tailwind might be very likely. Okay. I kind of regret not going for a more offensive position now. At least we know, yeah, the Blood Moon is slower than Heatran. I think I'm just going to protect and I'm just going to go for... I want a Hyper Voice. I think I do want a Hyper Voice. It's probably multi-scale Dragonite, so there's no point in Moon Blasting. I guess the question is, do I go down to something this turn? Which I definitely can. Stomping Tantrum and Blood Moon could be the choice of moves for my opponent we'll see or iron head okay iron head is fine i'm able to tank it pretty well i was like scared if like this was tailwind dry and i went for like tailwind earth power i do get a hyper voice and i'm faster than a blood moon that's actually really good information air power to heat trend too nice okay i'm pretty sure dragon i should not be able to knock out the heat trend with stomping tantrum even so i'm just gonna go for a protect with Heatran, and I'm just going to click Hyper Voice because the Blood Moon's the threat. If I get rid of the Blood Moon, I'm in a good spot. I'm just going to click Hyper Voice and Substitute again. Because if the Blood Moon protects, I get a potential free Substitute depending on what the Dragonite goes for. 
Interesting. So it wasn't Tailwind Dragonite. I felt like it might be Tailwind. They go for an Iron Head. They're playing really aggressive here, but I guess they're hoping for the flinch. I will be able to set up the substitute again. They do flinch, which is not great. Earth Power. That's fine. I guess they just don't ever want me to get the substitute off, but... I mean, Blood Moon goes down. Maybe they don't have a choice. I'm trying to figure out if there's a Terra option for them, but I guess Dragonite doesn't want to tear in the situation when you do want to resist the attacks right now. I'm going to go for... I guess I could Earth Power to Blood Moon. But again, I... D the thing is... I think Substitute is still the best play regardless. And Hyper Voice, I just, again, don't know when the Blood Moon is. I can afford to waste these turns because Iron Head is still not knock out the Primarina, so they have to get another flinch. And even if they KO the Primarina, I get a free swap. Nice, I do get the Hyper Voice off. That, I want to say this is a wrap. I don't see how they're breaking through, but I'm seeing crazier stuff happen. Let's see what uh, the Chiyu Dragonite... They didn't Terra, right? They just didn't have a Terra option that they went for? Or am I just crazy? Because the Blood Moon didn't Terra. I picked up an early knockout onto the Flutter with Iron Head, which I don't think Terra ferried. Yeah, they haven't terra yet, so I'm trying to figure out what their Terra is. I guess they don't want to tear the Dragonite. Which is fair. I don't have Sucker Punch, though, on the... I, no, I do have Sucker Punch on the, uh, the Xi'an Pao. But I don't have Sacred Sword, which this Dragonite could be scary, I suppose. I do want to double protect and get the leftovers recovery and just see what they're clicking. Because I'm no Terra. Alright. I want to see what the Chiu clicks. Because are you clicking Snarl? The thing is, single target, if it's like Specs Chiu, Snarl would do a lot. So I'm just making careful. Okay, so it is Snarl. So I want to Earth Power to Chiyu if that's the case. Yeah, I do want to Earth Power to Chiyu. Scale Shot. Ah, for the speed. Alright. I wonder if Primarina lives to Snarl. Probably not. I really hope I'm not messing up here. But I am going to go for an Earth Power. And... I guess I'm just going to haze the boost away, right? Because the Primarina lives. I think it's just better to haze away the speed drops and the special attack drop. So let's see. Snarl. Okay, Primarina goes down, so that's fine. Earth Power into the Chiyu should be acceptable. Scale Shot, I don't think should be able to knock out the Heatran sub and pick up the knockout at the same time, but we'll find out. One, two... I think if the third one doesn't break the sub, uh, we're chilling. Yeah, okay. I think we're chilling, because I don't think there's any shot that the Dragonite picks up the knockout. Oh, wow, it took four to break through the sub? That's uh, kind of sad. <laughs> Wait, it took all five to break the sub? <laughs> Let's go, Heatran. Also, I didn't know if the Heatwave was going to knock out the Chiyu after the Beats of Ruin, so this works out. Okay. So what is their Dragonite set? I, I we have used beads of we have used scale shot Dragonite. This is probably loaded dice Dragonite then before in the past. So is it Iron Head? What's the move set? That's my question. I think the only problem, as I mentioned before, we do not have. Uh, the beads of ruin is gonna be a bit weird actually. Let's see what their Terra is first. Because they should be going for the Terra now. Probably should have attacked with Pal. No, because they have Scale Shot, so they can actually bypass. The thing is, I don't think Scale Shot knocks out either. Let's see. Their Terra on the Dragonite is going to be Terra Steel. Okay, yeah, I'm not too surprised. With Iron Head, it kind of was like signaling that. So I'm going to protect the Pal. Uh, this is going to be kind of close. I think. Scale Shot going to come out into the Heatran. K. 
Terra doesn't really help me in any cases. If they extreme speed, they lose the game. So I think I always get a free sucker punch off in the Dragonite. The question is, does he try survive with the Beats of Ruin? Because it doesn't look like they have Earthquake or Stomping. I'm going to go for Earth Power and a Sucker Punch. That was going to be forfeit. Okay. I guess because like they saw the Terra and if... I mean, I don't have Sacred Sword. Maybe they thought I had Sacred Sword. If I had Sacred Sword, I probably 100% won the game because the Dragon Knight's probably in range of Sacred Sword at that point after the chip is taken earlier. I didn't have Sacred Sword. They didn't know that. <laughs> so they just forfeited instead. Nine Tails, Articuno, Urshifu, Wellspring, Ogre Pond, Chiyu, Landris. This is a way offensive team. Okay. <laughs> I feel like there should be a Scarfmon. I don't know who it's going to be. Also, I'm kind of curious if it's Dark or Water or Shifu on this team. Heatran's really good against Snow, but they do have Sheer Cold as an option. They also have a Landris, which is actually going to make things difficult. Okay. Mm. Going to be a little bit strange here. Ryan, I can put in work, but yeah, this is... I don't have a way to stop Aurora Bell. That's my problem. I do want to bring Xi'an Pao. Maybe Xi'an Pao plus the heat trip. The thing is, this is really weak to water or Shifu. I just don't know if it's water or Shifu or dark or Shifu. I feel like it'd probably be water. Like I'd lean it towards being water, but I don't know. I also don't have Sacred Sword, which is a big deal. I don't know if they're leaning Landers though. That's the question. Are you leaning Landers in this matchup? I think it's going to be a big one. I think I am going to lead Xian Pao plus Heatran. Maybe bring the Dragonite in the back. Uh, I don't really like Raging Bolt. I kind of like Primarina, I guess, the best because it's Ice Resist. Like, Primarina actually can switch into Ice moves really well. Uh, the only problem is Wellspring Ogre Pond will be a bit of an issue. Which I probably should consider. I do have Dragonite, but these tools are going to be tough. I do think that this is looking really rough. Let's see what we can do. going to be uh, Landris plus the Ninetales, which is actually really good for me. Okay. I do lead the Xi'an Pao plus the Heatran. Okay. So, how risky do I want to play this? Do I want to sub turn one or do I want to protect turn one? Because I could go for a. Mm, I think I'd rather protect turn one. Protecting crash sounds really good to me, but are they going to commit to terror when they have a safe protect? Uh, I kind of want to go aggressive. You know what? I'm clicking sub. I'm going for crash because I also could get a flinch on Landers in response. Okay, nice. <laughs> that's really good. Okay. Because if they set up a Roar Veil, that's fine. Because then I go crash and a heat wave is a super threatening tool that they don't have the best switch ins to. They have switch ins. Let's see if Roar Veil goes up. Yep. Okay, perfect. Whew. All right. That's a good start. But. I am gambling a lot of things, like the Nine Tails set. It could be Encore. If it's Encore, we're going to have problems. <laughs> so no matter what, this isn't even guaranteed. I probably should have clicked Heat Wave, but you know what? Let's see. I felt like this was a better offensive position, though, if there is no Encore on the Nine Tails, because then I just threaten Isle Crash in the Heat Wave the next turn, and I could freely click the Heat Wave instead of like having to go for Terra or Protect the following turn. So. Let's see if it pays off. I think it's really going to depend, but we are seeing a Terra involved from the Landers. But their Landers has committed Terra, which is a pretty important step here. I do have a feeling this is Encore. We'll see. Icicle Crash comes out from the Xi'an Pao, lands into the Landers for 50%. Moonblast is going to be fired off. Okay, so nice. It's a critical hit, which... Probably. I mean, it could matter in some circumstances. I don't know if Ninetales actually normally brings it down to Sash. We do get the flinch. That's huge. And a heat wave. That's really big. Okay. That's really nice. That's really nice. The BS of Xi'an Pao crash. Ah, I love to see it. Love to see it. 
<laughs> okay, I think my for Earth Power it was fine. I lose my sub, but the Landers is still checked, so we play a bit of an interesting game. But I think since you were put in extreme speed range, I was completely okay with the turn. Just gonna click Heat Wave and protect the POW, I guess. They are also committed to their Terra to Landers, which is really good. Which it means they can't Terra to Ogre Pond. It can't. It means they can't Terra a lot of their potential threats in the back, like that Articuno. Okay, it looks like they're just going for the Earth Power to break the sub, which makes sense. Oh, they had Sands here. Oh, they would have knocked the POW. Of course, they had to land the Sands here, but... Uh, I mean, it still was... It would have been weird. I probably had to bring in the Dry Knight and I was forced to Terra, but it's still, like, pretty reasonable for me, I suppose. Heat Wave will come out. Knock out Bo, so it's a 2-4 deficit, but I uh, gotta be careful. Like, this game is nowhere near over. So Landris next to Pal goes down. What is their final two remaining? Is it Articuno or Shifu? Because if it's Articuno or Shifu or Articuno Wellspring Okapon, it's gonna be really, really weird for the Terra. Terra's involved. Gonna be Wellspring Ogre Palm, which is not too surprising. Articuno? That is Articuno, I think. Yeah, okay. Not an over game by far. Dryonite's gonna be really good in the last slot, though. Okay. I'm gonna protect my Heatran, and I'm just gonna get damage if I can into the Ogre Palm. Yeah, I'm just going to go for a crash. I don't really need to damage an Articuno. They already used their Terra. Let's see how the rest plays out. They do have Aurora Veil, so I feel like they're pretty safe to just attack. Yeah, they are going to attack. I get an Ice Go Crash off. It shouldn't matter. I don't think it matters. I think they're I, I, I be cudgeling always to Heatran slot. But I don't think it matters. And like, unless what? Maybe it was Sword Stance. Maybe we had Sword Stance or some set of move. But I'm thinking it's just going to be a standard follow me. He turned back to full, which is good. All right, we bring out Dragonite now. And let's turn up the tempo a bit. We don't have Aerial Ace, but we can go for a Primarina swap for the Heatran. And I'm going to go for the Terra, and I'm going to actually Dragon Dance with my Dragonite. Because I do think that this is my best use of Terra. Like, I don't want to Terra Grass in front of the Articuno. And I'm probably going to leave the Articuno as the last Mon out on the field. So we're going to bring in our Primarina. We're going to be able to sponge up the Blizzards, the Ivy Cudgels. Go for the Terra with Dragonite. Get the Dragon Dance off. And then we actually pressure the Ogre Pond. Because I don't know if Ogre Pond is going to protect this turn. Or if it's going to... Well, Spiky Shield or it's going to attack. It's going to do one of the two. I don't know which one it's going to. But this covers both. You go for the Ivy Cudgel. Into the Primarina. Makes sense. Dragonite's going to come out from the Dragonite. Let's see. The Blizzard should not do too much with Multi-Scale and the Resist. Like, yeah, that didn't do any damage. Freezes the Primarina, which... I don't know. We'll see if it matters. Snow stops. Uh, the problem is the Ogre Pond can still probably live to extreme speed. Iron Head? I don't know if Articuno lives to Iron Head. Probably, right? I know it's Terra Steel. But you know what? I'm just going to Moonblast the Ogre Pond. And I'm going to Dragon Dance again. Because I don't think Ivy Cudgel and the Blizzard will KO. They also got to be scared of... I don't know if they can follow me. For the Articuno, this is going to be weird of an endgame. I'm just going to say it. It's just going to be a weird endgame. They're Ivy Cudgeling plus Blizzarding. I think Dragonite can be able to take the attack with ease. They also got to hit Blizzards too. Ivy Cudgel. Oh, wow. Crit actually would have. Oh, I did not think it got Haze. Or I did not think it was Haze. I didn't think it was Specs damage. But that is not good. <laughs> that is not, not, not good. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, that changes the game a lot. I'm going for the extreme speed Moonblast into the Ogre Pond. 
and hoping I don't know if it KOs. We'll see. I be casual into the Dragon Knight, but that also means the Articuno is unlocked in, so it can freeze dry. What's the last move on Articuno 2? Because that's also going to be a fear factor. Ah, this is actually. Oh no. Freeze dry. Yep. Shouldn't KO Primarine at the range. Yep. Okay. Moonblast. Ah, okay. Uh, bring out the heat trend. Not looking great now. <laughs> Double protects to stall out the last turn of Veil. I think this is the last turn of Veil, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Haze ended up being a big issue. And I'm still frozen. Place time we did in Horn Leech for the recovery. Okay. They went for Ivy Cudgel, they went for Freeze Dry, a non greedy play. Perfect. Alright, Heatran, you need to tank the Ivy Cudgel, which I think you could live one pretty easily. The question is Does he maybe knock out the Ogre Pond at the range it's at? I think it should. We'll see. Okay. It's all up to Heatran. And Heatran win this game. And Heatran win this game. A bit of extremes. Uh, not going for two extreme speeds would have probably been more ideal, but I was not expecting Haze. Ivy Cudgel. Oh, that did way more damage. That's a lot of damage, actually. Wow. That offensive Ogre Pop. Like. He is bulky. And I mean bulky. I know that's super effective, all that, but I'm kind of impressed by Ogre Pawn. <laughs> uh, I was not expecting it to do that much damage. Yeah, that actually has some pretty decent investment to do that much damage to Heatran. Huh. Or they got like a really high roll from a decently invested Wellspring, but. Uh, I was not expecting Haze, man. I felt like, okay, I get to plus two. I go for the extreme speed in the Ogre Pond. I cover for like spiky shields and all those factors, and I'm like completely fine. <laughs> That's not how it worked out, unfortunately. <laughs> all right, let's go over to games. In game one, the lead of Heatran and Primarino was amazing against my opponent as they struggled to break through Heatran. And Haze was a solid move, being able to get rid of the Quiver Dance boost and the special attack drops from the struggle bug that made it hard for my opponent to do much. In game two, a solid trade with Fluttermane for Dragonite, but then a nice position with Primarina and the switch to Heatran making the Chi and Blood Moon into a really awkward spot. Was able to get a nice substitute with the Heatran eventually in a bit of a stalemate, and my opponent conceding after going for the Terror with Dragonite, not knowing I didn't have Sacred Sword, but then looking back at it, I do win anyway in that spot because I get two sucker punches with Terra Ghost available on the Xi'an Pao to deny any extreme speed plays, so they were eventually going to have to attack there. In game three, a great start in the beginning, but when the Articuno got the freeze onto Primarina and then revealed Haze, it was looking like a rough spot. Of course, I did get the flinch early on in the Landris, so kind of makes up for it, I suppose, but maybe a little bit too much there, but I could have avoided by risking the potential Spiky Shield. I think it was probably going to have to be necessary and going for the two extreme speed would have given me the best odds there. Overall, I was very impressed how, how well Heatran and Primarino did in the short time I used this team. It was actually really incredible how well they were positioned and I'm actually a fan. I, now I'm understanding why Primarina has been picking up a little bit more in the East, especially for those global challenges. It's just a nice mod, especially against the Dozos I mentioned before. Uh, they were really solid Pokemon. I do think that Heatran still has a lot of potential. I tested Heatran here and there, and I still think it's a great Mon in the format. But of course, a little bit does have complications. Darker Shifu is still not exactly fun for Heatran. A Terra Fairy is a little bit awkward. Bolt is, you know, it's kind of an even trade, especially against the Solve as Raging Bolt or Power. You're able to do a bit, but can struggle a bit. But very fun team overall. If you do want to try it out, the rental codes hopefully are still available, but it is on your screen now. Otherwise, you can check out the details of the team and the creator down below in the description. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more VGC content as always.